Hello viewers, this is an initiative by Zoological Society of Assam. This is a non-commercial volunteer service to reach the students at the tough time of COVID-19 outbreak. So before the beginning, I would like to mention a gentle declaration that I have made this presentation, the short duration presentation, almost just for 15 minutes as a very basic introduction to cells. This is like a brush up of pre-existing informations that you have already about cells. You can say a bridge between your 10 plus 2 level information and a gateway to degree level cell biology courses. So that even if a single student missed any point earlier would get and ease in starting of uh, proper cell biology by the subsequent presentations by different faculties in coming days. And because at this point of time we can review, we can look back to the basics. Thereafter no one will be talking about what is the definition of cell, what are the different types of cell during higher studies. So let's start with the definition of the cell. So what's the definition that first comes to our mind when we say cell is the structural and functional unit of life. So one can imagine a single brick, repeated arrangement one upon another of such brick give rise to the whole building. Of course that is non-living and this is the point where it differs from a living organism is that in case of living organism the repeated units do functions as well along with structures. So many scientists put forward it their best words to define cells. Lowy and Schickebitz in the year 1963 defined a cell as quote a unit of biological activity delimited by a semi-permeable membrane and capable of self-reproduction in a medium free of other living system. So here is an idea of repetitions and self-reproduction. Another scientist John Paul in the year 1970 defined the cell as quote, the simplest integrated organization of living systems capable of independent survival." Unquote. The branch of biological science that deals with the structure, function, molecular organization, growth, reproduction and genetics of the cells is called cytology or cell biology. Actually, cell biology has been studied in three main aspects. Number one, the classical cytology that deals with light microscopically visible structures of cells. Second, cell physiology that deals with biochemistry, biophysics and functions of the cells and cell biology that deals with macromolecules such as nucleic acids and proteins. In current days, all these boundaries have been dissolved and cytology and cell biology are used as a synonymous terms to each other. So what is the position of cell? Let us move to opposite direction. If you cut me down into small pieces, you will get my heart or my kidney first. That is an organ from an organ system like circulatory system or excretory system. Then if you still keep going in making smaller pieces, you would get tissues and thereafter cells. If cell is the ultimate and we can't go below, the answer is no. Even if you go for cutting down cells, you would get atoms and molecules. Then why? we are biased and giving extra attention to cells because this is the first packet 
of all components in appropriate amount and size that is needed to start up a living entity. Atoms and molecules one will get in non-living items as well. This packaging, what we call now cell, have the features of living unit which can communicate to other units. Let us briefly have the history behind. Well, even at the ancient time, Greek philosopher Aristotle gave the idea of this repetition that I just said in constituting a plant or an animal. But actually, he made macroscopic structures such as roots, leaves or flowers, which are common in plants or segments repeated in animals. Robert Hooke was examining a thin slice of dried cork of the plant named Quercus through his self-made microscope. He could see some chambers in that slide. As because those were hollow, he named it cell. Cell in Latin means cella, hollow space. In fact, what he looked into was mere cell walls with some depositions of dried cells only. He could not get into the intracellular structures. It was Anton von Leeuwenhoek who succeeded in observing living cells for the first time with his upgraded version of microscope. Leeuwenhoek, the first person to describe the sperm cells of human blood cells, muscle cells, etc. out of his curiosity. Thereafter, many path-breaking developments occurred in the field of cell biology, such as, if you can recall, Robert Brown has discovered nucleus, and the cell theory came into existence. And what was that? Schleiden observed, while examining vast varieties of plants, that they are composed of wide range of cells giving rise to tissues. Almost at the same time, Schwann, a zoologist, observed similar kind of facts in animals and talked about cell membrane and showed unique presence of a cell wall in plants. These two scientists came up with the famous cell theory, which had later been modified by Rudolf Pirchow in 1855. Thus the modern cell theory owned by Sladen, Schwann as well as Rudolf Pirchow. The modern cell theory says all living organs, organisms made up of cell, if it's a unicellular or cells, number of cells. Number two, the function of the organism is the result of cumulative function of the cells. That means if I say the organism respires, actually means the cell is respiring. If I say the body needs nourishment, actually the cell that needs nourishment. And the third point, all cells arise from pre-existing cells. This is the postulate aided by Rudolf Virchow that he called via his very popular frame known as Omnicellulae Celluli. Um, if virus doesn't uh, easily fit into the cell theory, you know, as uh, this neither an organism nor a cell, yet having core of nucleic acid that is DNA or RNA, enclosed in an extended external mantle of protein. In free state, it is inert and active in living host cell. Now let us have a look on the wide variation of cells. Cells differ profoundly in their shape, size and activities. The smallest cell, mycoplasmas, are mere 0.3 micrometer in length. A typical bacterial cell size may vary from in the range 3 to 5 micrometer, while the egg of ostrich is known as the largest cell. Uh, one can imagine the size, uh, how much it would be like about 15 centimeter in length. So the factors, uh, those are responsible for the size of cell is the number one, the first one is the nucleocytoplasmic ratio. 
the nucleus, the size of the nucleus should be capable enough to take care of the entire cell. The second point is very important that is the surface area to the volume ratio. So that's why generally the cells are very minute that is linked to the surface area to the volume ratio that makes the cell very efficient in working. And the third point is the rate of metabolism. If you see different animal cells, there are vast variations with their activities. With many extensions, a nerve cell is totally different from a glandular cell. Or a reproductive cell like a long filamentous sperm cell to a ovular ovum cell, to a bone cell, to a spindle shaped muscle cell. There are variations in blood cells as well. White blood cells, the WBCs, are typically amoeboid shaped. Red blood corpuscle, RBCs of human, is a biconcave without nucleus. In contrast to an amphibian RBC, which is bulging in the middle portion due to the presence of nucleus. If we shift to the plant set, there also we can see a vast variation. Here is another picture that is a guard cell of dicot, which is a pin shaped or kidney shaped. Had it been a monocot, the gut cell is supposed to be a bicot. This is just for an example. Similarly, if an organism doing well as a, as organism with a single cell, this is called a unicellular organism. For example, the protozoans, amoeba. An organism with many cells in it is called as multicellular organisms. Best example, we the humans. The multicellular organisms differ greatly with the unicellular organisms with a significant leap of divisions of labor among the cells in the multicellular organisms. Well, any cellular organisms may contain only one type of cells, either from prokaryotic cells or eukaryotic cells. In this presentation, we are not going into the details of the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. As in the subsequent presentations later by different faculties, it will be discussed in detail. Just for an idea, let us break this terminology. Pro in Greek means initial or primitive. Carrion means nucleus. So, prokaryotes are lacking of well defined nucleus and possess relatively simple structure without membrane bound subcellular that is intracellular organelles. Example, bacteria. On the other hand, U means true. Again, carrier means nucleus. Thus, this is with well-defined nucleus and relatively more complex in their structure and function and with distinct intracellular or subcellular organelles. Example, high plants and animals. The prokaryotic cells are represented by bacteria, blue-green algae or cyanobacteria, PPLO, uh, the full form of PPR is pleuroneumonia-like organism and microplasma that already I showed earlier. The prokaryotes have variations but their basic organization is same. All prokaryotes have a cell wall surrounding the cell membrane except in mycoplasma. I am reiterating mycoplasma doesn't have cell wall. As there is no well-defined nucleus, thus basically genetic material is naked. In addition to genomic DNA, many bacteria have small circular DNA called as plasmids that might provide extra feature to a bacteria such as resistance to a particular antibiotic. No subcellular cell organelle is present except ribosomes, which are the sites for protein synthesis. Many ribosomes may attach together to form polyribosomes.
are special membranous structure which are extension of the plasma membrane into the cell are known as mesosomes. These extensions are in the form of vesicles, tubules or lamella. They help in the cell wall formation, DNA replication, etc. etc. Interestingly, mycoplasma again doesn't have any mesosome. A unique feature of prokaryotic cell is the inclusion bodies. They are not membrane bound of course. They store reserve food and life free in the cytoplasm. Grash vacuole, for example, are found in the blue green bacteria. In addition to higher plants and animals, fungi, protease are also included in eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cell cytoplasm contain membrane bound cell organelle like a mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, and organized nucleus with nuclear envelope. The genetic material is organized into chromosomes. Besides, eukaryotic cells contain cycloskeletal structures. There are wide variation among eukaryotic cells. Plant cells are widely different from the animal cells because of having cell wall by the former. Plant cells are with a plastid or chloroplast and a central large vacuole. In animal cells, vacuoles are there in generally. They are many in number but smaller in size. Animal cells have centrioles but plant cells do not have centrioles. So I would like to conclude over here for the basics of overview of cell. For any feedback, you can write to the address mentioned below. So this is Shamim signing off. Take care.